And on Syria, let me just say this. We will continue to support the legitimate aspirations of the Syrian people, uh, engaging with the opposition, providing, with, uh, providing them with the humanitarian aid, and working for a transition to a Syria that's free of the Assad regime. And today I want to make it absolutely clear to Assad and those under his command, the world is watching. The use of chemical weapons is and would be totally unacceptable. And if you make the tragic mistake of using these weapons, there will be consequences and you will be held accountable. We We simply cannot allow the 21st century to be darkened by the worst weapons of the 20th century. And now Neil Clark is a journalist who's written extensively about Syria, and he joins me live from Oxford. Uh, Neil, we, we've just been hearing from our correspondent about the difficulties of getting information confirmed on the ground. Uh, uh, Obama has said government use of chemical weapons would be a red line. What if a chemical weapon were carried out by the rebels. Do you, do you think this is a possibility? Do you think this that they did? Well, if chemical weapons have been used, it's very unlikely that it would be the Syrian government that's used them, because the Syrian government knows that the US, France and Britain are just waiting to strike them. So the very last thing they would want to do it would, would be to provoke that sort of intervention. So it would be lunacy and madness for, 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 for President Assad's forces to use chemical weapons. And so if, you know, we find that chemical weapons has been used, it has to be by the rebels. And if that's the case, then obviously I think that will highlight the hypocrisy of the US and the West because they've said that it'd be a red line if chemical weapons are used. That only seems to apply if President Assad's forces use them, the Syrian army. And so we've got to be consistent on this. Chemical weapons, to use them, it's wrong. And if the rebels are using them, they should be indicted for war crimes. Now, the new opposition prime minister, a, I guess a naturalized US citizen, what do you think drove this election, his election? Well, it reminds me of the, uh, of the election, in inverted commas, of Mahmoud Jibril in Libya. If you think back two years to the Libyan NTC, a very similar scenario. Mr. Jibril, like Mr. Hito, he, he had spent many decades in, in the U.S. He'd studied in the U.S. And there was a very revealing WikiLeaks cable from the U.S. ambassador to Libya, which said that, uh, he, you know, he was our kind of man. He was the sort of a person who could follow the U.S. line, so to speak. And I think it's exactly the same scenario with this man today, Mr. Hito, because uh, he spent decades living in Texas. He's from the U.S., uh, he's got a uh, passport, and of course the, the, the Americans want to make sure that if and when President Assad falls, they've got their man in Damascus and they've cherry-picked him. He, you know, he's been voted by 35 people, and <laughs> it's quite ludicrous to, to argue that this, that this guy has the right to rule Syria, whereas President Assad, whether we support him or not, does have sizable support within the country, which is why he's still in power. And so I think, to answer your question, the U.S. wants this man as an ideal sort of leader uh, post Assad to take power and uh, obviously to do the things expected of him, which would be to open up the Syrian economy to U.S. multinationals, to privatize the economy, and of course to uh, break with Hezbollah and to break with Iran. Now we say, uh, we keep saying rebels, but really they're a mix of moderates to Al Qaeda link extremists. Again, can Hito keep them together? No, it's a, it's a simple answer to that because, uh, what, as we said, what we call the rebels are a very wide ranging group of people from radical Islamists. Al Qaeda groups to moderate Islamists uh, to people who are very, very anti American to people who are very pro American. And he's got an impossible task here. And the, uh, and the biggest problem he's got is, of course, that the so called rebels don't have majority support within Syria. They don't. Uh, this is the big, this is why this conflict is still going on because uh, if President Assad was an unpopular, as the US would like us to believe and Britain would like us to believe, then President Assad would have gone by now. The fact is, is that he does have sizable support in the country. People in Syria look at the rebels and say, no thanks, we don't want these people. They're very divided. We don't know what we're going to get. We're going to get radical Islam. We're going to get who knows what we're going to get if they take power. So they're rallying behind, behind the government. So I think he's got an impossible task. Neil Clark, always uh, interesting to hear your thoughts on uh, this subject. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here live. Thanks,